What's up guys, Grim here. Today we're going to talk about a couple different things and I hope I don't mess this up anymore. I've tried to record this several times already and I keep on stuttering so bad whenever I'm talking. I don't know what it is with me today. Uh, apparently I just can't speak. So hopefully this goes a little bit better. But the things that we're going to talk about is first off we're going to talk about the patch notes because they are huge there is so many big changes in these patch notes that we have to talk about it and then the second thing that we're going to talk about is there has been some leaked information that is possibly going to spoil what's coming up in uh the new rift expansion so if you guys don't want to know about that stuff i will say a spoiler alert before we even start talking about it but it's going to be in the later half of the video so you don't have to worry about me talking about it right now so we're going to go over the patch notes first let's go ahead and start with it all right so first off ocho had his little baby boy he was born and he is nine pounds four ounces so congratulations to ocho hope everything is going well at the home front uh enjoy the screaming baby i know what it's like so uh yeah congratulations i hope you're enjoying your time off from work though all right so they've fixed a few things here not really going to talk about too many of that stuff like the carnival of ascended and ui stuff uh that's not really too important all right so the big thing that i'm wanting to start off with here is that they have uh added an item to the cash shop that is big value for the money all right so the big complaint with rift has always been that you know things cost too much you know whenever they sell like the ultimate uh nightmare tide expansion stuff it's like the big package was a hundred and fifty dollars you know that just seeing that number will turn off players a lot of times so yeah you know it's it's always been something that people have criticized rift about and then whenever you have the things that are a little more valued such as the lock boxes you think okay well i'll spend a little bit of money on this lock box and it's not going to be too terrible on me if i spend a little bit of money well then you open up the lock box and it's absolute garbage in it it's you know you really feel like you got ripped off you're not really happy with how that transaction went at all yes you do have a small chance at this mount or whatever item that they're putting in it that would be really cool if you got but you would like to have a little bit of value for your money other than possibly getting that mount you know and people have been really hard on the rift team about it and it's kind of justified because i know anytime that i buy the lock boxes i you know open up a couple of them and i go man this is absolute garbage i do not want to buy any more of them so uh this here they are actually offering an item that really feels like it's worth the money all right so this item here it is fifty dollars so it better be a lot of good stuff in order to be worth fifty dollars yes it is basically this unlocks the primalist calling also it unlocks 14 souls from the nightmare tide storm legion and plain touch wilds dlcs so all of that stuff all of the souls are going to be unlocked except for the very new ones that came with the ascended pack such as the frost keeper shadowborn war chanter all that stuff you're not going to get the four uh, or five new call uh, new souls man see i told you i was stuttering a lot uh, you won't get the five new souls but you'll get every single thing before then uh, it will also unlock up to six character slots on every single server for you it's going to give you the two earring slots as well as two bag slots on every single one of your characters it's account wide so yeah no longer are you going to be buying the individual bags on each and every single one of your characters i think it's six or seven hundred plat uh not platinum credits in order to unlock a bag slot well now you're going to get two of them on every single one of your characters and people have tried to add up the value of this uh if you actually paid for each of these items individually as you had to previously to this uh it was hundreds of dollars at least over 200 dollars uh, of stuff here so for you to get it for uh, 50 dollars hopefully they'll keep a deal like this around uh, they're saying it's going to end on may the 11th but yeah it, if it ends up going well i'm they'll probably bring it back or else some variation of it so 
if, if you need these items, I highly encourage you to buy them because Tryon really needs to see that if they price things really nicely like this, that it will sell and players will be happy about it. So yeah, if you need these items, please consider buying it. Uh, we need to send the message to the Rift team that they need to keep on pricing things really reasonably. All right, so after that, we have some soul changes here. We're gonna start off with Cleric, and it, this applies to the Sentinel Soul and the Warden Soul. Now, basically, whenever you see, uh, if you've watched any of my PvP videos whenever I played Sentinel, you will see that I heal people, then I throw big heals on them, and then I'm out of mana. And I'm not healing anybody anymore because I have to cast an ability that is a channeled ability to try to get my mana back. So while I'm generating my mana back, my allies are getting killed around me because I can't heal them while I'm out of mana and having to channel this ability. Well, they've changed it to where now whenever you use this ability, it will actually make you gain mana back as you're healing for 10 seconds. So a huge, huge change here. That is crazy. So uh, if you're using, uh, let's see, Sentinel healing uh, restores 15% of your mana for this 10 seconds. And then also it restores 3% uh, mana per second while active. So it just passively gives you mana. And then if you're casting healing abilities, it's going to regenerate 15% of your mana every time that you cast a, a Sentinel healing ability. I'm assuming that's how it plays out. That's how it's reading. So yeah, the same will be for uh, Warden there as well. It'll work much the same way. All right, so then we have some nerfs to the new souls here. Starting off with the Frostkeeper Mage. Now, I've read over these changes. I'm not going to go over each and every one of them, but basically it got nerfed in its tankiness. Now, people like Ekru, uh, he generally is a, a very good player in the game. He starts playing Mage all of a sudden and he, he starts rolling a Frostkeeper and he just basically walks up to the enemy teams and face tanks all of the damage onto him. The healing is so good with Frostkeeper and then it had the absorption and tankiness and uh, he was able to just face tank the entire enemy team which made it to where his team can sit there and rain down all the DPS on the enemies without any you know fear of uh, you know retaliation because their healer is up front tanking all the damage uh, and also healing them so it was crazy how strong this was and i've been predicting this ever since i seen the new souls like whenever they were first teasing them and stuff i was i was if you guys watch my videos i was going the frost keeper this is this looks ridiculous to me well it was ridiculous and it may still be uh but it did get a nerf here and the nerf is basically affecting how tanky it is so now I just was in a war front yesterday where I played against Ekru and he comes up with his Frost Keeper and it looked very obvious that he was trying to face tank the damage once again like he did in a video that he posted on the PvP forums. Well, let's just say that he caught fire by my Pyromancer and uh, I'm not too sure if he was testing out the effectiveness of Frost Keeper since the changes or else he was thinking that he could just face tank it once again but that did not go so well. Uh, but that's a very good thing. You don't, wanna, you don't want healers that are invincible. That has always been a big issue with healing in the past, with PvP specifically, is that the healers, the healing they did was good, but it's whenever they could just you know heal through all damage and you couldn't really bring them down to stop the healing now a smart thing to do in pvp is swap to the healers and bring them down but if they're so tanky it, it, you know what's the point you're just not going to bring them down and then they're healing up their team as well especially with cross healing so uh to have them this tanky as a frost keeper was man it was a bad deal so it's very nice that they nerfed this Okay, next up is the Primalist, uh, specifically the Maelstrom uh, Soul, which is the new soul for it. Now, we're kind of used to Primalist being extreme burst with the Vulcanist. Uh, whenever they cast the Ethereal Beam, it just ate through your resistances, nuked you down, blew you up, you had no chance of retaliation, it was game over no matter what gear you were wearing. Well, the same was kind of happening with the Maelstrom. It was able to cast an ability called Vaporize. And yes, 
vaporize it did because whenever it hit you in pvp it was so overpowered you know it just it burned you to ash man you had no way of coming back from it pretty much well they nerfed it 20 percent less damage in pvp now so yeah no more fear of the maelstrom uh the way that it was before i'm sure vaporize is still going to hit pretty well but it's not going to be nearly as bad as it was all right so next up is war channel warrior and this got buffs it's basically buffs to uh reduce power cost of abilities and uh make buffs last through uh death and stuff like that the war chanter is kind of seen as not very powerful so with the other ones being so overpowered and war chanter being underpowered it's it needed a little bit of stuff uh, needed a little bit of love so to say all right so now the big thing that a lot of people are going to care about with this patch is uh this stuff right here you know and it goes down and down basically they nerfed most of the raids in rift right now so the mind of madness uh intrepid hammer nail you know uh all these different things that are generally seen as you know uh, the harder content as in raiding or intrepid adventures, not the easy uh, general adventures, is now that they're, they're having uh, less damage in them, as in the monsters aren't going to damage you nearly as bad. Man, I am stuttering like crazy. I can't hardly talk. But also, uh, it had it to where a lot of the uh, like health pools and stuff have been reduced. I mean, right here you see a health pool re reduced by, uh, let's see reduced by 30% here. So yeah, and it's across the board here. Look at all this, 30%, 30%. 30%. Uh, let's see, HP of bosses reduced by 25%. Yeah, just so many different nerfs uh, happening here. And it went into uh, Rena Fade here, uh, Mount uh, Shyrax, I guess that's how you say it. And yeah, Tyrant's Forge as well. So all these bosses have been nerfed uh big time so everybody that has been struggling in order to do this content can now do it hopefully and uh but this is kind of a big thing in that it's kind of setting up for new things to come because whenever they nerf bosses and stuff they're basically saying we want you guys to be able to do this that way that you have this gear whenever we re release the new stuff coming up just shortly. So you can pretty much see that new stuff is on the horizon whenever they nerf things like this. Whenever they make it to where it's easier to do things or easier to get gear or something, that means something new is right around the corner and they're wanting you to get ready for it because they don't want you in like T1 gear or you know whatever you're wearing at the time whenever they release T4 or t5 they want you caught up a little bit they want you in t3 they want you in t4 before t5 comes out that kind of stuff so uh yeah these nerfs is pretty much spelling out what's coming up but i don't know what's coming up we just know something is so yeah cool things all right so the, uh this is where we're going to talk about the new leaked information here so if you guys don't want to have anything leaked to you at all as in the the new expansion and stuff for rift uh it's not like big time leaks it's not like uh we're finding out like the definitive answer to what's coming up and all that it's kind of a lot of guessing uh so it's not it's not like you know major spoilers or anything like that it, it's kind of we see names to things and then we're going to uh, assume what they mean so all right so this is the point that we're going to talk about it so if you don't want to see it click off the video now all right so uh crit happens on the forums just recently posted this and it's talking about on the rifts magello list of zones it's now showing four new entries uh, one is called the uh, Gedlionium Badlands or something like that. And then TOA Test Map 3. And then you have Tin Brian uh, Hellscape as well as the uh, Xerathaz Mire. Man, these things are hard to say. But especially today, whenever I can't hardly really speak at all. So, uh, but basically, these are kind of. Uh, it's a guessing game now they kind of wonder what's going on with it uh he spells out right here with the badlands it it seems to be referring to a place that is the homeland of the gedlo uh for those who don't 
know or can't remember, the Gedlo were the tribe of goblins holed up in the darkening deeps in Gloamwood and came to Talara Talara from the Plain of Fire as servants of Melforge. So yeah, right off the bat, that's pretty much a reference to the Plain of Fire. So yeah, and then whenever you look at just even the name like Hellscape, like the next one, kind of makes you think of fire. So uh, this one ha is kind of abbreviated. We're speculating it. the tin being is uh, kind of look, uh, he says it looks like a joke, a joke at first, but then he realized that tin being is actually Tenebrian. So if you guys follow any of the storyline, you know about the whole Tenebrian things with the uh, Lady uh, Glacia and all that. I know, I know it specifically from the Chronicles. Whenever I did Chronicles, I seen the storyline spelling out there, but uh, I didn't do all the raids or any of that. So I'm not too, I'm not real familiar with all of the storyline just yet. Uh, he says, so the zone name is actually Tenebrian. Hellscape. We already know that the Tenebrians had involvement with the Plane of Fire due to their interactions with Lady Glacia. So there you go. Uh, let's see. What else does he say? He says uh, the te uh, test map three. Okay, it's a test map, but what is T O A? Um, uh, is that an internal code name for something? An expansion, perhaps? Uh, just lots of guessing here. Is the TOA the code name for the fire-based 4.0 expansion, like Trail of Ashes or something like that? He's, he's mainly speculating, but uh, I, I would like to know what you guys think about this. Do you uh, are you guys more familiar with the lore and uh, know more than he does on here and can basically spell out what you think that these uh, names are? I mean, everything seems to be pointing at the plane of fire which I'm hoping is like going to be so much cool stuff because usually whenever like uh, take for instance in World of Warcraft whenever they release Cataclysm you know here you had a big flaming dra dragon and all this stuff and the whole lands were like volcanic and stuff and it was just so cool of an expansion to me. Well, then, you know, you had Mr. Pandaria, which was the big downfall of it all. So with, with this, we're kind of dealing with our version of Mr. Pandaria in Rift right now. With Nightmare Tide, it's, it's been really seen as a, a fizzle whenever it comes to an expansion. Uh, Nightmare Tide has basically been the plane of water, which, you know, nobody is excited about a plane of water. Uh, everybody hates swimming in games. You know, the few that like it are, you know, very, very few, so to say. Uh, you know, whenever Dark Age of Camelot had Trials of Atlantis, they, they had so much swimming and stuff, and the players absolutely abandoned the game after it. So nobody was happy about the plane of water, water in Rift for the most part. Uh, luckily, there wasn't too much swimming, but the overall experience of Nightmare Tide with the water element to it has been very lackluster, uh, you know, mediocre in the extreme. So... Hopefully this plane of fire is going to be a lot more ex uh, exciting. And like I said, we're kind of dealing with the mist of Pandaria in Rift right now with Nightmare Tide because everything else that has came out with Nightmare Tide has been kind of disappointing. I mean, uh, I'm one to speak of it myself because I have been one of those players that was hardcore in uh, the Storm Legion stuff. And then when once Nightmare Tide came out and they... Uh, you know, I wasn't too excited about the water stuff, but I was thinking, you know, you got to give it a chance. Let's see how good it is. But then with all the bad PvP changes and everything else, you know, I mean, they completely killed PvP for the most part. Uh, Conquest has been really bad now. I mean, just so many things have been bad about this expansion. I'm really hoping so many cool, exciting, you know, good changes are going to be coming up. I mean, here you have a good cash up item that gives value. Now we're having leaked stuff that is going to possibly be very exciting uh, stuff on the horizon. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to punch that like button. As usual, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.